بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیر اینڈ ٹوڈے ٹوڈے ود واٹ یو ہیو آلریڈی سین دا ٹائٹل آف دا ویڈیو دا لاسٹ ویڈیو فار مینی آف یو نائنٹی پرسینٹ آف یو اینڈ دیٹ از واٹ ٹو سالو دی پریویس پیپر دی فائنل ٹرم پیپر فائن سو لیٹس گیٹ گوئنگ ود آؤٹ ویسٹنگ اینی ٹائم وی سالو دی فائنل ٹرم پیپر final paper and this is what this is you know very well this is of our of my own semester this was uh, spring 2020 semester spring 2020 semester and of course UETP shower so let's get going question number one question number one is what Question number one is that find the Fourier transform of the following signal and sketch the magnitude and phase as a function of frequency including both positive and negative frequencies. And the signal that is given is X of T that is a shifted impulse signal delta of T minus 5. This is given you are asked the frequency response. You are the Fourier transform which means you are asked about the x of j omega for the signal and then you have to plot the magnitude of it and you have to plot the, the phase of it. So very easy question. This carries how many marks? 5 marks. So let's go for the 5 marks. So the Fourier transform equation is what? The Fourier transform is, uh, you know, that x of j omega is given by an integration negative infinity to positive x of t into exponential of negative j omega t and the integration cons uh, variable is t. So if I put it over here, so you know very well, you know very well, but, but, but uh, this is a paper, so let's see we do it from the paper point of view. You know very well the, that the impulse has a Fourier transform 1, right? So let's say I take impulse. Let's say I take an impulse as my signal. So I take an impulse as my signal, exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t. Now you know from the shifting property again that the integration impulse multiplied with, the next, with another signal would be the other signal at the value where impulse is located. And what do I mean by that? So you know that very well as well. This is again something very easy. This would be equal to this at t equal to 0. Why this is uh, uh, located at 0? So we have an exponential of 0 and this is equal to 1. Fine. Now we apply what? Now we apply the time shifting property. Now we apply the time shifting property. And what is that time shifting property? If x of t has a Fourier transform x of j omega so now if i shift by x of t minus t naught it would have a corresponding exponential of negative j omega t naught fine so have a look have a look what what do we have we have t naught equal to t naught equal to 5 right so if our t naught is 5 so this means that the the fourier transform if you say like this that delta of t has a fourier transform equal to 1 so now delta of t minus 5 would have a fourier transform exponential of negative j omega 5 multiplied by 1 so which means that my required fourier transform x of j omega this is exponential of negative j omega 5 if you have a plus over here, you have a plus over here, fine? So if you treat it that way, let's say I have a plus into minus of 5, so I would have a plus into minus of 5, so again it would be the very same thing. So this is, you know, my answer for now. Now you know very well the magnitude of an exponential function, the magnitude of an exponential function is always equal to 1. So time shifting would not alter the magnitude so so which means that the magnitude of x of j omega this would be equal to 1 irrespective of whatever is in the exponential term so which means if you plot it so so the plot would be like this if this is the omega axis this is the magnitude of x of j omega axis so this would be equal to 1 for the entire frequency and you know the reason right you know the reason 
Now, now for the phase. So for the phase, we know that exponential of j theta, we know very well that exponential of j theta is what? It is cos of theta plus j sine of theta. Similarly, if you have a negative, so exponential negative j theta is cos of theta minus j sine of theta right so over here have a look we have a negative sign and theta is uh, 5 omega so i could say that my x of j omega is equal to cos of uh, uh, 5 omega minus j sine of 5 omega and we are given something in the in the rectangular coordinates form a real part and an imaginary part you know how to find the face you know how to find the face it would be tangent inverse of the imaginary part divided by the real part now uh, this is some mathematics rules or whatever it is that that the 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 phase of x of j omega this is given by this negative sign here comes the negative sign you have a tangent inverse of sine of 5 omega divided by cos of 5 omega now I don't know what this negative sign suggests maybe it suggests uh, that uh, cause is positive and uh, sign is negative so this is maybe the fourth quadrant or what when cause is positive and sign is negative yes so this is the the fourth quadrant so maybe for that we have this negative sign but anyways you confirm it please from your uh, mathematics teacher or if you know the answer to this why this negative sign so please let me know in the comment section but this i know that this is a there is a negative sign over here so uh, now if you if you see so this sign by cause is again uh, you know tangent so i could say that this is a negative tangent inverse of 5 omega into tangent of 5 omega Right, so tangent inverse and tangent would cancel the effect of each other and the overall phase of the x of j omega this would come out to be negative 5 omega and you can draw it somewhere here. If this is let's say the, the phase axis, this is the omega axis, so it would be something like this, maybe a little more steeper fine so 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 yes yes that's it that's it that is it for the first question that is it for the first question second question question number two is what question number two is determine x of t for the following condition if x of s is given by so let me write the question over here question number two says what x of t is unknown when x of s is given by 1 over s plus 1 into s plus 2 so this is a laplace transform question and conditions are given number one x of t is right sided and number two x of t is left sided x of t is right sided and number b x of t is left sided so let's come to it again so x of s first of all we simplify this first of all we simplify this using the partial fraction 1 over s plus 1 into s plus 2 so i could write it as an a into s plus 1 in plus b into s plus 2 cross multiply would imply what this would imply 1 is equal to a into s plus 2 plus b into s plus 1 put s equal to minus 1 so minus 1 would give you what s equal to minus 1 implies what that 1 is equal to a times minus 1 plus 2 is positive 1 plus 0 a is equal to 1 s is equal to minus 2 implies what 0 plus b into minus 2 plus 1 is again 1 hmm? minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1 minus 2 plus 1 is a minus 1 so b is equal to minus of 1 so given your x of s x of s would be about 1 over s plus 1 minus 1 over s plus 2 now coming to the cases coming to the cases so if the uh, if it is a right sided signal so which means what now first of all the poles so the poles are at negative 1 and negative 2 right poles 
is negative 1 and negative 2. So which means for the right sided signal the ROC would lie to the right of the rightmost pole. The ROC would lie to the right of the rightmost pole, right? So if you draw the ROC first, if this is your negative 2, uh, this is a uh, negative 1, this is negative 2, so, so the ROC would lie like this, right? This is the right sided signal. What do you do for x of t? So you know the, so the, you know the basic uh, formula exponential of negative a t into u of t for a right sided signal. This would be equal to 1 over s plus a with the real of s greater than minus a. Right? Yes. So what do you do? Based on this, you have this x of t would be equal to what? x of t would be equal to a is 1 so it would be an exponential of negative t u of t then you have a minus sign exponential of negative 2 t u of t is that fine it is you can take u of t common whatever you need to do the mathematical manipulations you can right how did i do this so i wrote this for this Right? For this, the ROC is greater than minus 1. For this, the ROC is greater than minus 2. The overall ROC has to be greater than minus 1. Simple as it is, you know this very well. Number B, if this is a left sided signal, if left sided signal, so now for the left sided signal, the ROC would lie to the left of the leftmost pole. Now again, let me clear one point. This would, the ROC would not include this pole, right? Like over here, it's to the left of minus 2, which means just to the left, it would start minus 2.001. But it would not include minus 2. Now, if this is a left side signal, so again, you know the basic formula, you have a negative exponential of negative a t, u of negative t. This has the corresponding uh, Laplace transform 1 over s plus a with the condition that real of s is less than minus of a. Isn't it like this? It is. So, now have a look. What do you do? So, uh, uh, you take this left side. So, now you have a, your x of t. Let me take the blue pen again. So, this would imply what? That my x of t in this case would equal now uh, 1 negative exponential of negative t u of negative t. And then you have a minus 1 over here already. And then minus from the formula. This formula. So, this would become a plus exponential of negative 2 t u of minus t you do the mathematical manipulations yourself this is your answer now for the left handed case for this the roc would be less than minus 1 for this the roc would be less than minus 2 the overall roc would be to the less than minus 2 is that clear it is it is we could have had a sec we could have had a third case over here as well if let's say let's say i include that if x of t is double sided so in that case, what would be the case? In that case, uh, let's say I have over here C. So in that case, the ROC would lie between minus 1 and minus 2. Which means to the, to the right of minus 2, so use this formula. To the left of minus 1, use this formula. So which means in this case, in this case, part C, my x of t would be what? It would be to the right of minus 2. So for this, I would use the right side. So the negative I already have over here. So negative exponential of negative 2 t u of t. And then you have a plus. And for, for 1, we would use the left side formula. So this is for 1. So, so this negative would come over here. So negative exponential of negative t u of minus t. And, uh, and so this negative is from the formula and, and that's fine for this. And then you have to have positive E but here no. Yes, that's fine. So that is fine. So that is about question number two. Moving into the next question, let me remove the board first. Okay, before moving into the third question, let me tell you the weather is, uh, is quite good outside. The rain was expected from the last uh, you know, couple of days, but it uh, did not rain. It did not rain, but it's quite good outside. Anyways, question number three. 
a causal LTI filter has a frequency response this whatever is the filter or system or whatever it is we are interested in the frequency response frequency response is given by negative 2 J Omega for the following input determine the filtered output Y of T X of J Omega is given and that is equal to 1 over J Omega plus 2 and the time domain output is unknown you know this you know how to do this yes we are given h of j omega we are given x of j omega i can write my y of j omega as x of j omega into h of j omega and then by taking the inverse of y of j omega i will get what i will get my y of t so let's let's do this let's do this so y of j omega is equal to h of j omega into x of j omega so this will be a negative 2 j omega upon j omega plus 2 so have a look this would be a little difficult for the mathematical manipulations so let's say let's say we replace we do some replacement and i say that let s of j omega be a new variable and this is equal to 1 over j omega plus 2 now if this is equal to 1 over j omega plus 2 you know that the corresponding s of t would be what this would be exponential of negative 2 t u of t right yes this will be an exponential of negative 2 t u of t isn't it like this it is you know for the basic formulas so which means what if uh, you know what if, if I write it in a pair form so the pair would be like this s of t has a pair s of j omega now if I differentiate it if I say if I have the derivative of s of t so now what would be the case now we would have a j omega to be multiplied with the original Fourier transform right yes so which means I could write like this which means that I could say that if we have a derivative of s of t so I could say that this would be j omega and s of j omega is already un, uh, already known which is 1 over j omega plus 2 won't it be like this it would be similarly if I multiply a negative 2 so if I multiply a negative 2 on one side and let's say I replace it by, a, by an s prime like this or let it be however it is now if this is multiplied with a negative 2 on both the sides so you would have a negative 2 j omega divided by j omega plus 2 have a look isn't this uh, you know your your y of j omega isn't this your y of j omega it is isn't this your y of j omega this one this is your y of j omega so which means i could say that the negative 2 the derivative of s of t has a corresponding fourier transform that is the same as y of j omega which is equal to negative 2 upon j omega plus 2 right i could say this i could say this so we already know what that y of j omega would correspond to y of t as y of t would correspond to what to y of j omega so which means what which means that we could we could if if the Fourier transforms are equal this thing also has the Fourier transform y of j omega this thing also has the Fourier transform equal to j omega can I not say that this thing is equal to this thing? I can I can so this implies what that negative 2 the derivative of s of t is equal to what is equal to y of t it is it is and my y of t is unknown so which means i've got it i've reached it if if i've not got it so at least i've reached it so let's say we do it so y of t is what y of t is negative two times the derivative of s of t and s of t is s of t is this exponential of negative 2t u of t so you have two functions over here so you know how to do this so you would get this negative 2 is already here 
So you take the first thing outside, you take the derivative of the second. Similarly, then you take the second outside and you take the derivative of the first. So let's 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 come over here. So this negative 2 is already outside, then you have an exponential of negative 2t. And then the derivative of the unit step is a unit impulse signal and then plus u of t and then for the exponential of negative 2t the derivative would be a negative 2 times exponential of negative 2t. So now if I take the exponential of negative 2t common, so if I take negative 2, this is negative 2, right? Then I have taken an exponential of negative 2t as a common, I have what? I have a delta of t. Uh, and then I have a plus minus 2 times u of t. Isn't it like this? It is. Now if I, uh, why? No, it's not taken common. Well, I don't have to take it common. I have to uh, give it inside. No, no, it's fine, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It's absolutely fine. So uh, now I multiply it, let's say. So if you multiply it, what would happen is uh, that uh, if, if anything is multiplied with an impulse, so the answer would be the other function might add the value where the impulse is located. So which means this would come out to be negative 2 is already here and then you would have an exponential of 0. Why? Because the impulse was located at t equal to 0. And then you have what? Then you have what? So this minus, this minus would become a plus and plus 4 and you would have an exponential of negative 2t into u of t. Exponential of negative 2t into u of t. So this could also be your answer. This could be your answer. And what is that? It's a negative 2 plus 4 times exponential of negative 2t u of t. Yes. Yeah, that is the answer. You can take negative 2 common anyways. This is your y of t and question number 3 is done. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Question number 4. A particular LCI system is described by the difference equation. So question number 4 is given and we have a difference equation given y of n plus 1 over 4 y of n minus 1 minus 1 over 8 y of n minus 2 and this is equal to x of n minus x of n minus 1 and you are asked to find the impulse response of the system you are asked to find the impulse response of a system so we have done examples on this uh, on this method and we know the basic formula how to do this so we first find the frequency response and from taking the inverse of that we would go to the we'll get to the inverse and how is that so the frequency response is found out by this formula exponential of h of this is equal to summation k running from 0 to m b k exponential of negative j omega k divided by summation k running from 0 to n a k exponential of negative j omega k is that fine? It is. So k, so let's 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 write it. H of exponential of j omega k equal to zero, no difference term, b k is one. One into exponential of zero. And you have a plus b1 is minus one. So minus one into exponential of negative j omega one, right? Similarly for a k, so for a zero it's one. Then a plus 1 over 4 for the first difference term with an exponential of negative j omega and then minus 1 over 8 with an exponential of negative j omega 2 for the second difference. Now this is what you get directly from the, from the formula that we've already derived. If you don't know this formula, if you don't know this formula, you have to take the the Fourier transform of both the sides, Fourier transform of this would be, then, then of course manipulations you do based on the difference, 
Well, the first difference you multiply with an exponential negative j omega, the second difference you multiply with an exponential negative 2j omega. Similar in both the sides, you take y of j omega common from the left side, you take x of j omega common from the other side, and then you divide y by x, so you get your h. But, having this formula, I did it within what? Maybe a minute, right? So, anyways, this is what you've got. Now, let me factorize it. Let me a little factorize it. So, I could write my h of exponential of j omega as 1 minus exponential of negative j omega divided by, I write it as 1 minus 1 over 4 into 1 plus 1 over 2. So, 1 minus 1 over 4 exponential of negative j omega into 1 plus 1 over 2 exponential of negative j omega. You multiply it, you get back this thing. Now I do the partial fractions. Now I do the partial fraction. Let's say I, 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 I take this as an x. 1 minus x, right? So let's say I do what? I, I do a partial fraction as 1 minus x is equal to, uh, no. 1 minus x upon 1 minus 1 over 4x into 1 plus 1 over 2x, so this would uh, be equal to what? a upon, right? So a upon the first thing, let me do it here. So this would be equal to a upon 1 minus 1 over 4x uh, plus b upon 1 plus 1 over 2x and this is of course equal to this thing this is of course equal to the whole thing that is 1 minus x into 1 minus 1 over 4x into 1 plus 1 over 2x now you multiply both the sides so what would you get you would get an a into 1 plus 1 over 2x plus b into 1 minus 1 over 4x and this would be equal to 1 minus x. Now, so for finding a you need to put b equal to 4. Put b equal to 4. Isn't it like this? It is. So putting b equal to 4 would not do anything. You need to get this a 1. So yes, put it as a 4. Put x equal to 4, right? Let me use a different color. Let me use a different color. I'm quite weak in this mathematical things. So it would be an A times 4 by 2 is 2. You have a 3A. You would have a 3A. Plus B, so 4 by 4 would give you a 1. And then 1 minus 1 would be 0. So B would become 0. And this would be 1 minus X. So 1 minus 4 would give you what? It would give you a, a negative 3, right? So this would give you a negative 3, which implies that A would be a negative 1. Is that clear? It is. Now, for finding b, you put a equal to 0, so which means you need to put x equal to minus, minus 2. x equal to minus 2, right? So which means what? You put minus 2, so minus 2 minus 2 will be minus 1, 1 plus minus 1 would be 0, a would be 0, right? And then you have a minus 2 over here. So, so this would be b times 1, um, plus 1 over 2x plus 1 over 2 right won't it be like this it will be and this is equal to 1 plus x this would be 3 so this you have a 3 by 2 b is equal to 3 so 3 3 would cancel out b would come out to be 2 yes b would come out to be 2 which means the final expression I could write it as what my h of Exponential of j omega, this is a is a negative 1 upon 1 minus 1 over 4 exponential of negative j omega plus 2 upon 1 plus 1 over 2 exponential of negative j omega. So this you have got what? This you have got the frequency response, okay? This h of j omega is frequency response and now if you take the corresponding inverse of this so you get the corresponding impulse response and you know the very basic formulas for this you know the basic formulas let me write it somewhere over here 
let me write it somewhere over here. So what is the basic formula? You have an a to the power n u of n. So this has the corresponding uh, 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 Fourier transform of what? Of corresponding Fourier transform 1 over 1 minus a exponential of minus j omega. 1 minus a exponential of minus j omega. This would be a to the power n, which means that my corresponding h of n, my corresponding h of n would be what? a to the power n. So this uh, over here my a is 1 over 4 and I already have this negative sign. So this negative sign over here and then I have a 1 over 4 to the power n u of n and then a plus plus 2 and then for that I have my a is equal to 1 over 2 so this will be 1 over 2 to the power n u of n. So for me this is the answer. If you know any further mathematical manipulations you can do it yourself taking u of n common and then dealing between 1 over 4 and 1 over 2 anyways till here the answer is enough for me. This is question number 4. Question number 5. Let me remove the board first and also I will have a glass of water and then I'll come back. So, okay, okay, so what do we have next? The last question, question number five, consider the LTI system with the input this, question number five. We are given an LTI system with the input x of t is exponential of negative t into u of t and impulse response h of t is equal to exponential of negative 2 t u of t. Determine x of s and h of s in the first part x of s and h of s this is unknown in the first part in the second part using the convolution property y of s and then y of t now using the convolution property so you know that very well right y of s find out y of s and then you find out the corresponding y of t so I don't know uh, why have they mentioned from your answer to part B find y of t. So 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 part C again they have mentioned uh, you know y of t. So anyways anyways let's get going let's get going. Okay part A. You know this very well although you know this very well but this is paper so you have to take a little time on this. You know that when you have exponential of negative a t u of t, you have the corresponding transform 1 over s plus a with sigma greater than minus a. But this is a paper, so you have to prove some steps. Although this is a very simple formula. So we would do what x of s, we would take negative infinity to positive exponential of negative uh, t into exponential of negative s t. So let's say I make negative sigma plus j omega into t with respect to t. Now what do you do? Now let's say this was a uh, you know unit step was involved so I have 0 to infinity right then you have a negative t exponential negative t I have an exponential of negative sigma t exponential of negative j omega t 0 to infinity exponential of negative uh, I would take a 1 plus sigma into t exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t. Now you know the corresponding Fourier transform for this. The corresponding Fourier transform for this would be what? You could write it directly. You would have a 1 over uh, 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 1 plus sigma plus j omega. And you know very well that sigma plus j omega is equal to s. So which means that I've got my corresponding what? I've got my corresponding x of s which is equal to 1 over s plus 1 right so this was the proof now for the ROC for the ROC have a look from here 1 plus Sigma Sigma plus 1 could be greater than 0 Sigma plus 1 could be less than 0 
If it's greater than zero, you put a negative infinity, you put an infinity, you have a negative infinity, that would be fine. That would be fine, that would converge. If you have it negative, negative negative would become positive, you put t equal to infinity, this would diverge. So, which means for ROC, sigma plus one should be greater than zero, which means sigma should be greater than minus one. That's the ROC, associated ROC. If you, similarly, you can draw it as well, you know, by yourself. This is negative one. This is the ROC. J omega axis, sigma axis. Is that fine? It is. But what are we asked? Yes, we are also asked H of S. So this was for x of s. Now for h of s, what do you do? So now for h of s, you integrate this h of s would be equal to negative infinity to positive h of t exponential of negative st dt. So you do this by yourself or not because I've got a little tired. Anyways, u of t would give me this 0 to infinity h of t is exponential of negative 2t Right, then I have an exponential of negative sigma t, exponential of negative j omega t, you know, separate the real imaginary parts. Zero to infinity, you have an exponential of negative sigma plus two into t into exponential of negative j omega t with respect to t. The corresponding Fourier transform, now you know this very well, this would be one over sigma plus two plus j omega which means what that my h of s has come out to be s is equal to sigma plus j omega right so this would be 1 over s plus 2 fine now for the roc so for the roc again consider this thing sigma plus 2 sigma plus 2 could be greater than 0 sigma plus 2 could be less than 0 if it's greater than 0 that's fine this is positive this is negative overall thing would be negative you put infinity you have a negative infinity this would converge if you have this negative so negative negative would be positive you put equal to infinity the overall thing would diverge to infinity so which means for roc sigma plus 2 should be greater than 0 or should much should be greater than minus 2 and and, and you could draw it minus 2 this way now part B so uh, you need to find uh, using the convolution property you need to find y of t so how is that how is that you know I could say that in this part the y of s is unknown and then in part c y of t is unknown the corresponding so y of s is equal to what y of s is equal to x of s into h of s and how is that from the convolution property because in the time domain my y of t is x of t convolved with h of t so the corresponding convolution property is this is that fine it is so let's say we do it so please hurry up y of s this would be equal to 1 over s plus 1 into s plus 2 and I've already solved this. Have I not already solved it in the previous question? S plus 1 into S plus 2. S plus 1 into S plus 2. Yes, I have. I have solved it. But that was, uh, you know. Yes, it's 1 over S plus 1, S plus 2. I've already solved it. That's great. That is great. So in the question number 1 or question number 2, I've already solved this. So you do this by a partial fraction again. So this would give you a 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 2, right? Now you know what we were given a right-sided signal u of t. We're given right-sided impulse response. So the output would also be right-sided. So what do you have for that? So for that we have an exponential of negative a t u of t gives you 1 over s plus a with sigma greater than minus a right so it means that my answer that my answer is what 
or if I write it separately for so for this I would have what exponential of negative t u of t right this is for 1 over s plus 1 with sigma greater than minus 1 right similarly for this exponential of negative 2 t u of t you have what you have 1 over s plus 2 with sigma greater than minus 2 right so the overall answer now part c this was your you know y of s you found out your y of s with the corresponding roc and that is what sigma greater than minus 2 so part number c y of t is unknown so y of t is the inverse and these are the inverse formulas so y of t would be what uh, a exponential of negative t u of t and then you have this minus sign and then you have an exponential of negative 2t u of t and you can of course take your u of t common as well exponential of negative t minus exponential of negative 2t whole multiplied u of t and this is your answer this is your final term paper this is your signal and system course a hundred percent complete a hundred percent complete anyways that's all about it that is all about it the final term paper is very important you need to check this out the main reason is that uh, many of the paper many of the questions are repeated and in the online exam it could be a hundred percent repeated as well so anyways, it was a simple paper. Uh, I, I maybe have taken some time, but anyways, that is the last video of the course. That is uh, for now, for you people. For many people would be interested in Z-transform, I'll come back to Z-transform after a little break. This video you will get on the 20, uh, 24th of July, most probably, most probably. So you need to subscribe to the channel as well. Why? Because I've put in so much effort into this maybe 130 videos more than that so that requires a lot of time a lot of effort and i've made them by the grace of almighty allah so anyways you need to you know subscribe to the channel and you need to remember me in your prayers as well and my final um, grade in the signal system course was an a right so uh, you have anybody who you have done it uh, covered this course with me or you're watching this video so you also need to comment your grade also below in the comment section so that I should also have a feedback somebody studying it with me what is their response so please please let me know your grades in the comment section anyway so I finish this video over here see in the next lecture very soon inshallah till then take care. well next lecture next course you could say most of you could say next course and what could that be this is the sixth semester in the seventh semester you have an electrical machine so you may watch me in the electrical machines course or maybe directly into the control systems course you can also let me know in the comment section what course do you want to, uh, so 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 my thing is i want to go back to electronics i want to to complete the electronics course first before moving into next so my idea is i go for electronics and then i go for network theory and and the rain has started to pour down if you want me to do any other course you, your suggestions are always welcome so i should not take any more of your time till the next video wherever you see me uh take care of yourselves right take care of yourselves and everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel and let's enjoy the rain goodbye